Okay, let's do some math for fun. Here we'll solve this quadratic congruence. But the modulus here is not prime number. It's okay though, we can still solve it because we know 55 is just 5 times 11. It's only a product of two prime numbers. This is not that bad at all. If you have a, pri <laughs> a product of three prime numbers or four prime numbers, please just use a computer, I will say. Anyway, let me just show you guys an example so I can illustrate the idea. First of all, let's take a look of the number 57. This is congruent to 2 in the mod 55 world. Because 57 divided by 55, you have 1 with a remainder of 2. So this is true. And now, because 55 is the same as 5 times 11, we can write this down. We can say for sure that 57 being congruent to 2, even in the mod 5 world, this is true. You can, of course, double check. And then on the other hand, we can also say 57 being congruent to 2 in the mod 11 world as well, right? And in fact, we'll be using this idea to help us break this down so that you can actually work with the prime modulus right here and there. So that will be our first step. And of course, people will say, hey, we can just you know, use the Chinese remainder theorem whatsoever. But yeah, you know, I will just show you guys the procedure. And that's pretty much what I'm doing, right? So here we go. I will write this down again, namely x squared being congruent to 26. And we will first put down the mod 5 situation. And secondly, we will have to also have x squared being congruent to 26 mod 11. This is now preferred it because you have 5 and 11 being prime numbers. And that's so wonderful, seriously. Now we just have to solve this and solve that and we'll see how we can... We will end up with system of congruences. Four of them. Yeah. Anyway, let's solve this first. Well, here we have 26. That's good because 26 is congruent to 1 in the mod 5 world. So this right here is the same as saying x squared being congruent to 1 mod 5. And thank God, 5 is prime. So we can technically just take the squares on both sides. And then don't forget the plus minus 1 on the right-hand side, right? So you know you have two situations. The first one is x being congruent to positive 1 mod 5. And the other one is x being congruent to negative 1. And you can just add 5 to it, which is the uh, same as congruent to 4 mod 5. So you have these two situations for that, which is for that, right? And on the other hand, we will also do the same right here. This right here is 26. It's not that bad because 26 is congruent to 4 mod 11. So that's solvable. This is also solvable, right? So this is nice. So let me just write it down. x squared is congruent to 4 mod 11. 26 divided by 11, you have a remainder of 4. So that's nice. And this is so nice because, again, we can take the square roots. So you get x being congruent to 2 mod 11. And the other one is x congruent to negative 2, which is the same as congruent to 9. You just add 11 to this, and you will end up with 9 right here. And this is still the mod 11 situation. <laughs> we have two situations from here, two situations from here. And here's the deal. You have to pair this and that together, pair this and that together, pair this and that, this and that. Four. System of congruences. So yeah. Imagine if you do have a product of like three or four prime numbers. Uh, use a computer, seriously. Anyway, I will just show you guys the first situation and you guys do the rest, okay? First one, I will just tell you x congruent to 1 mod 5. And I'll pair with this x congruent to 2 mod 11. And this is where the Chinese remainder theorem kicks in. But I'll show you guys how to solve it by knowing how to interpret the congruence and change that to equation and do some algebra and things like that. And be sure you guys watch my old video on how to interpret this. So here we go. Start from this. When you have x being congruent to 1 mod 5, this tells us that x has to be in the form of 1 plus 5 times the integer. Let me just put on k for that. And again, k in this case is an integer, right? And then you put this into this x for the second congruence. That's how we can make connection. With that being said, we have 1 plus 5k being congruent to 2 mod 11. 
like this. And then from here, we need to figure out k, right? We need to figure out what k is in terms of the congruence right here. And then we'll put this back right here so we can generalize the form of x. And you'll see how to do that. Now, of course, we can subtract 1 on both sides. So we get 5k being congruent to 1 mod 11. <sighs> I don't know if I hate to write L, like the mod mod more or if I hate to write the lim for them more. I don't know. But I'll just deal with it. Anyway, I want to isolate k. This is 5k congruent to 1. I cannot divide both sides by 5. Remember, we have to work with integers only right here, right? So this is how you can do it. You can write this as 5k plus 11l for some integer l and it's equal to 1 and then do some Euclidean algorithm and all that, whatever, to figure out the uh, multiplicative inverse, right? And all that stuff. Or you can just do it in your head. Because, <laughs> you know, you have two ways to do it. First way, you can multiply this by 2 on both sides. Because 10k is the same as negative k in the mod 11 world. And negative k, you can just divide the negative on both sides and you can continue from there. Or you can multiply by 9 on both sides. Because 9 times 5, we know that's 45k. And 45 is congruent to 1. So 45k is the same as saying congruent to k. Ma, right? Sorry. 45k is congruent to 1k. And then congruent to 9 times 1, which is 9. So by that, we know k is congruent to 9 mod 11. So this is very nice, isn't it? And from this right here, I can tell you k has to be in the form of starting at 9, and you add 11 times an integer. Let me just say l for it. And remember, l is an integer. And this is how k looks like. Just put this right here into here, then you'll figure out x is in the form of 1 plus 5 times k, which is that, namely 9 plus 11l, like this. And you can actually figure out what x is. x is just equal to 45 plus 1, which is 46, and then of course 5 times 11, that's 55l. So we have this 55l right here. Now, if you have this equation here, x is equal to 46 plus 55l, we can change that back to the congruence. You can just talk about this in terms of the math 55. And this right here will give you a solution to the original question. So in here, we can say x is actually congruent to 46. And this is the math 55 situation. And there you have it. This right here is the first answer. And if you guys square this, divided by 55, you will end up with 26 for the remainder, right? And you pretty much will have to do the other ones as well. I will just tell you guys the other ones, okay? So this is the answer for the first one. And then the second situation is that you have to do this and that. So I will just tell you x congruent to 1 mod 5. And then the other one is x being congruent to 9 mod 11. Right? So that's pretty much the idea. And of course, you can do all that, but you can also just uh, think about this a little bit. Hmm. Thirty-six works because no, thirty-one works. Right? Thirty-one works because thirty-one is congruent to one mod five, and thirty-one is congruent to negative two mod eleven which is the same as saying congruent to 9. So 31 works. So right here, I will tell you uh, how to write the answer. So I will say x is congruent to 31 mod 55, right? So this right here is the answer for this part, for this system of congruences. And of course, you can do the order again, right? And then number three, the one we will do is pair this up with that. So x being congruent to 4 mod 5. And the other one is x is congruent to 2 mod 11, like this right here, right? OK, so here, let's see what we can do right here. Uh,
24 works. That's it. That's it. 24 divided by 5, you have remember the 4. 24 divided by two, 11, you have remember, remember the 2. Not remember, remainder 2. So 24 works. Uh -huh. So the answer right here is x is congruent to 24 mod 55. You pretty much can just run through the number from 1 to, well, 0 to 55, or 54, technically, and then just, just think about it and all that stuff. And we'll just do all that again. And the last one, anyway, 4 and 9, right? So the first one is x congruent to 4 mod 5. And the other one, x is congruent to 9 mod 11. Huh, let's see. Actually, 9 works right away because you see, okay, 9, of course, that satisfies this right away. 9 divided by 5, you have 1, and then the remainder is 4. So it works out nicely. So the truth is, from here, the answer is x is congruent to 9 mod uh, 55. Mod 55. Okay, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4 answers right here. Ah, so this is how you can solve it if the quadratic congruence does have a solution. Just kind of break this down into a product of primes and all that. And I know some of you guys might be asking me, what if you have, let's say, mod 8, which is 2 times 2 times 2 and all that stuff. But you no, know, I think this is about it for this video. You guys should just check out my next video for the other situations. I think the number 3 questions are a lot of fun and then, yeah. Uh, leave a comment down below if you have any questions. And if you guys are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Thank you guys so much. And as always, that's it.